I'm Richard Maxwell. Been farming here at Houseside Farm, Enneville, since 1998. It's a National Trust farm. It's a beef and sheep farm. A lot of people would think we're well into the Enneville Valley, when in actual fact we're just at the start of the valley. Uh, we're about halfway up the lake, to the side of the lake, looking down to the lake. Um, but from here to the head of the valley is another seven and a half mile. Uh, from here to the to the start of the valley, it's two miles to the to the village of Ennerdale Bridge. So yeah, we are just in the opening uh, and probably the lower ground of the valley, uh, which is most of our pasture fields and um, our meadows. And then we go up further up the valley onto more pastures and and a lot of fell land, where our we farm Herdwick sheep and uh, Galloway cattle. So. Uh, traditional breeds for a traditional type of valley. So our land uh, stretches up onto Haycock, uh, Steeple, Pillar, Kirkfell, uh, onto the lower areas of Great Gable. Pillar is the ninth highest mountain in England, eighth highest mountain in the Lake District, and our sheep graze to the top. Uh, our cattle graze very well, very far up. They'll graze to well over 2,000 feet uh, in summer. Uh, it's nice to see cattle doing their own thing, doing well, really what they're allowed to do, which is being natural. Um, we used to farm continental cattle, very much production minded in the early days, using a lot of fertiliser and feed and, uh, and a lot of inputs. Uh, and those continental cattle were constrained by modern uh, production farming methods in small fields, They'd eat the grass, then we'd move them every few days, every week or so into the next small field. And we were more or less uh, constraining what they could do. After the introduction of the Galloways in 2006 uh, into a large area of the valley, 145 hectare area, and allowed them to do their own thing. There was, would be a matriarch, there would be a boss who would decide when we were moving, whether it was into the trees for shelter, whether it was up on the higher ground to get away from flies, whether it was to water for drinking. It was nearly always the same bossy cow that would decide. So calving time, we'll go and see them daily, uh, and there'll be a cow missing. And I think, oh, she'd gone off to calve. You'd look for her, you couldn't find her. Um, so you go the next day and think, well, we'll find her today. No. And it's been as long as seven days without finding a cow. And by this time, you're getting worried because you're thinking there's a disaster happened, we've lost a cow. And after seven days, the cow will be back with the herd. And you think, oh great, our cow's okay, but no calf. And you think, oh well, at least the cow's alive, we've probably lost a calf. And then after another seven days, the cow will bring the calf out. Amazing how, very much like a naturally, like a deer would do, to leave its offspring somewhere and go back uh, during the day, feed the calf, and when the calf was strong enough, bring the calf out, introduce it to the herd and see that it's accepted by the rest of the herd. Probably in 2001 when we took on the, the fell, first fell flock, the Herdwicks, and, and seeing them naturally was the first step. The second but major big step was the introduction of the, of the Galloways uh, and that led to us turning from a production minded farm with a lot of inputs, uh, fertiliser and feed and such, to converting to organic and looking at things totally different, more naturally, and also looking at the valley uh, and the area where we farm um, and thinking it's not an area where we can force things. We need to allow things to do things naturally and, and benefit from that. So a lot less inputs, um, changing probably back to a lot of tra more traditional type of farming. I feel at one with, more at one with nature and and the environment than what I did before. Because now I, I sort of look back and, and look at what we were trying to do, which was to, to produce as much meat, as you know, very, very much continental cattle with a lot of muscle, um, and, and, and trying to produce something that certainly didn't fit into the environment where I live. Um, and I often think back to the days when the first People went to France and bought these big continental cows and because they could, the holy system allowed them to and we brought them back here and because we could doesn't necessarily mean we should. 
uh, that's my opinion now. We should look back and I think the way for the future is probably how, th how things were a long time in the past. Uh, more natural, more traditional. Let the land and the, the vegetation dictate to us what we should do because we shouldn't try and make the land do what it's not you know, natural to do. So the wild Ennerdale uh, element of the valley, although I don't necessarily go with the word wild because the cattle aren't wild, they are farmed, they're very, very extensively farmed, which is the way I, I like it now. There are, in the very extremities of the valley, there are fences, there are boundaries, but the boundaries are so far apart that they can do their own thing. They can walk for miles without without any any boundary at all. Yes, in times of frost or snow, we supplement it with a bit of hay to, to, to look after them. Because the main thing I, I see as my job uh, as a farmer, farming these animals in the valley, is their welfare. So nutrition is the main thing, is an is a important thing. Uh, and nutrition in winter is, is what we have to look at closely. Parasites is a, are another thing, because we're in a very wet area, uh, and the, there is liver fluke. Um, but we try to do everything on an evidence based so we do samples, uh, either blood samples or uh, fecal egg samples, and, and, and the result of those samples leads to treatment in some cases. We do no routine treatment, so that's a big thing, and, and that's, that's a I think uh, is, is a good thing. The fact that we don't every eight week treat for, for something whether it needs it or not. So we now try to have everything evidence based. Yeah, so our neighbours and ourselves, we, we were all invited to a meeting by, uh, that, was, that was put on by the Wild Endale Partnership. At the time it, it was uh, the National Trust, um, the Forestry Commission and the United Utilities. In a local pub, uh, we were all invited and the idea of introducing cattle into the valley was floated. So it's an area of land, um, as I said, 145 hectares, uh, largest area, forestry, some fell land, some, some uh, pasture. And the idea was floated to introduce cattle. And at the time, we were the only farming business, uh, Alison and myself, at the house side, that showed any interest in this. Uh, cause Quite a few of the neighbours said no, it, it wouldn't work. Quite a few of the neighbours were mainly sheep farmers. Uh, it was fair to say that we had both cattle and sheep, although a different type of system. Uh, and uh, when we showed uh, interest, looked at it as an opportunity, um, we were told by some of our farmers that we were lunatics and we would lose them all, which turned out, thankfully, not to be true. The cattle were introduced in 2006 and they've been thriving since. Mm. So much so, 2009, we, our numbers had, had, had outgrown the area that we introduced a, and we split the herd and we took half of the herd up to Black Sail and introduced another uh, area to cattle. Uh, and, and then since then, 2013, we got, took on the tendency of Gillsweight and introduce another herd of cattle, so effectively we have three small herds of, of Galloway cattle in, in the valley. But tomorrow we will be gathering on pillar fells on a range of, of, of mountains of pillar, um, up to 3,000 foot, and this is where uh, our herdwick sheep, pure herdwick sheep, graze all summer. Our environmental agreement says that we, we take them off in winter, uh, so tomorrow we're taking them down, to bring them down to put them with the, the rams to mate them, and we'll be looking for somewhere in the region of 200 sheep. We gather the sheep up the valley, away from the, the steading actually, but we gather up there and we gather into a, a pen and then trail them back home. Uh, and then we sort them, get them ready for mating uh, later in the month. So again, we change from from uh, crossbred sheep to all, all herdwick sheep. We only have herdwick sheep now. Mm. Uh, they fit in with the system, again, working naturally. Very, very little input, uh, but I, th I think we have a decent class of Herdwick sheep and, and we're breeding lambs that we're selling this time of year uh, into the meat market. They're making a decent price. People are afraid that natural England's influence in reducing numbers. I, I, I can tell a story that you know we have had to reduce our numbers on, of sheep on the fell in the short time we've had sheep on the fell, uh, which is 20 years. Um, 
so the, the flocks that we took over, we've had to reduce numbers. But I see the quality of the, our sheep improving because of that. I see when I go to gather, I can see what's under my feet, you know, the vegetation benefiting from less sheep. So I'm not one that's saying, you know, it, it, it's so negative. There is a stopping place. You know, there is a, there is a happy medium of the number the number we should should farm. Uh, but but I do see a future for the I do see a future for the herd of sheep uh, because it is so much part of the landscape. It is probably the only type of the only breed of sheep that can do what it does. So in the time we've been here, we've seen some massive changes in in the biodiversity, the vegetation, the flora, the fauna, the bird life. I'm not an, uh, uh, a botanist, so I can't name all the plants, but you see a massive difference in the, the types of plants and the butterfly life that, that follows them, the bird life. I know that the uh, partnership do bird surveys quite often and they're pleased with the different type of, of bird life that are now, dippers on the back. I don't know whether it's part of maturing, getting older, because uh, and, and having family, two children that are now 18 and 20, but when they were growing up, when I was farming with the continental cattle, didn't have time, we had cattle in every building in winter, our winter was seven months long, cattle inside for seven months, outside for five months, we grow as much grass through them five months, and preserve it, conserve it for the cattle to, to eat in winter. So it was a it was a time when we were very busy. Ch two young children didn't have time to do anything with the children. Family life suffered, so it all played played a part in the change. Uh, and now the family come into the valley with me. We, if they were at home, they would be gathering tomorrow tomorrow with me. Um, so they they like to play play a part and see and also see the differences that have been in their short short lifetime. How you know they noticed what things were and how things are now. It's nice when you think the next generation uh, notice what you're doing and hopefully it will benefit from what you do. I hope that what I'm doing, somewhere along the line, we realise that what we're doing is the right thing now. Uh, I hope I have some influence on other people to make them, well, to help them realise and do similar things. Um, I think people are noticing now more what's right and what's wrong, uh, and accepting that we probably do need some change. Looking back 100 years, I would like to see a lot more of things like curlews, things, the things that were here naturally, that I think we are responsible for the demise of, and I hope it's not too late, and I hope that we can change things around and they come back naturally. I suppose everyone has a happy place, uh, some people probably just haven't realised it yet. But uh, the, the place where I like to go and I can sit and spend time uh, is, is up the valley and just sitting watching cal Galloway cows doing their thing. Sometimes 20 minutes, half an hour, uh, just to observe. That is, is special. Some people do come into the valley to see something that's special to them and it is their special place. Uh, listening, watching, or just being there and being part of it. He, he's very special. Now, yes, we've got to eat, so we've got to produce food. And in going forward, you know, we we will need those areas that are still farming. But in an area like Ennerdale, where it's very difficult to drop a plough in, where if you put fertiliser on, you're killing a lot of native uh, species of grass to try and promote a, a, a rye grass that, that certainly doesn't fit in Ennerdale. It doesn't fit in. We shouldn't do it. We should preserve the areas like the valley I live in to, to be more natural.